Uh, how's it going? Good evening, DJ. How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. How's it going? I can see you've got energy there. You know, it's it's good to be an Olympian, eh? Uh, you you got you to have, you gotta have more energy. You got to, like, like you're saying now, the lady is like, you know, she's calm and she's cool. Some people are like that. I'm like over the top on the other side. So <laughs> it is what it is. Amazing stuff. Malon, um, thanks for being here with us, man. Um, it's been it's been amazing to hang out with you and um, the energy that you give and um, your craft that you give. And I'm just gonna leave you, man, to go with it. Take it away. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm so so excited and big thank you, TJ, for inviting me to be here. Um, I'm, I'm really really excited to be sharing my uh, my journey and perhaps inspiring and really just giving some ideas of what I think really success is. The funny thing is I'm talking about Olympic Games and I mean, it's a passion of mine. I don't know, does anybody, anybody in the room, guys, I love to be interactive. I just want to connect with people. Tell me something like this. Every, TJ was talking about the, about the um, Olympic Games and stuff. Does anybody know of people that are really trying to get to the Olympic Games and manage? Just want to get that, just put a one if you know of anybody that's trying to get to the Olympic Games and manage. Because, you know, a lot of people, I think, I think there was a statistic, something like, um, something like for every 10 people that try to qualify for the Olympic Games, something like around the world, something like one in every 10 or even less. But it's a crazy statistic that most people do not, do not manage to get there. And it's funny, like most people actually struggle to attain their goals. And it's like this whole, this whole thing, because the Olympic, the sports itself is a short-lived dream. It's a short-lived moment in time. Um, and once what happens is, you know, we've got to carry those messages and those ideas through into other aspects of life. And my goal is to share some of that with you today. So this was me. I actually, like TJ said, I, I qualified for the Olympic Games in two, Beijing in 2008. And then eight years later, managed to duplicate the same process. Now, I'm gonna bring a color, coloration to what I do today, which is marketing and business in general. The thing is, if you do not have a system, if you do not have processes, if you do not have the, something that actually works within your business and your life, it's very difficult to become successful. In other words, if you don't have the right habits, the right routines, it's very difficult to become successful. But first you need a dream. Mine actually started, ooh, I was like nine years old when I started judo about 11 when I first heard the word Olympic Games, and I didn't know what it was. My coach actually came and said, you know what, I actually read it in a, in a newspaper because I qualified for a team, um, a regional team, and my coach had said, you know, Marlon's dream is to go to the Olympic Games. And that's the first time I was like, what is the Olympic Games? And that, since then, it's stuck in my mind, you know, and really it's coming to those people who, are impre who impress on you. Are you around the right people? Because with someone like my mentor at the time, who was my coach at the age of 10, 11 years old, shared something to somebody else that I heard and I was totally hooked. It's like, that's where I'm going. So the interesting thing is the, the, the gentleman in the picture with, in Beijing in 2008, he's a good friend of mine, been lifelong brothers since... Since, since before then, grew up together, competing together, and later on, competing for the same country, which is very interesting. So in 2008, I qualified for, for South Africa, and I was one of three players in, in the South African team. First black person to ever go for South Africa, and um, the, the only South African to actually win and get to the next round. Um, which is very difficult to do because judo in, 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 in the world and especially at the Olympic Games is a knockout sport. You lose your heart. So you can go and travel to all these different places in the world and have 
something like one match. So just I want to get an indication to people in the room. Give me a one if anybody knows what judo is. Because I want to show you a video just now. And while those comes in, like one, if you if you if you do if you know what judo is, and two, if you don't. And uh, the people in the, the people in the bottom there with in Rio 2016 was actually my, my teammate out here at Tux, Zach Piontek, he won a goal at the Commonwealth Games, and my coach Nicola Filippo. So who's in your team? So I think there's, there's very few people. Few people know that what judo is. Like, that's awesome. That's very cool. Very cool. See, like some people know what judo is. That's really cool. The thing about the thing about sports, the thing about judo, what it brought to me is the opportunity to travel. And it's, I mean, like what 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 the amount of time that one spends in something, the amount of time one invests in something. And you got to see the result that comes out of it when, and it's got to manifest almost from other people's eyes as well. And that's when you know, like, you're truly getting somewhere. So 2008, I, it, was, it was a very different system to what it was in 2016. In 2008, just a very long story short, is that what I needed to do is I needed to sacrifice a good eight was was eight to ten months of my of my life. You see, judo is not a funded sport. For those of you who know, it's not a funded sport. I had to self fund the sport. I had to self fund it through business, and I had to get it from whoever was willing to give it to me. And getting and the way I got through was through a, a family business where we would do trade, general commodity trading throughout the the Southern African district. And I learned that's where my, my, my ability to sell, my ability to market started to grow. What I did was I earned just enough money just so that I could make it, right? And what I had the opportunity to do is go travel to Morocco. And I had to give up everything I had behind me. Literally, I remember I had maxed out my credit card. This was the last opportunity to qualify for the Olympic Games. It was on a shoestring because the only way to qualify for the Olympic Games is to get points. At that time, it was to get points in the African region. And it was very, 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 very tight. I was meddling, but there were lots of other people doing other things in other competitions. And it was very tight for the top spot. So what happened was I needed to make a very, very um, strategic decision. I had to leave and go and live in Morocco for eight months. They funded us in that space. And it allowed me, we were funded by the International Olympic, the National, the International Judo Federation, and that allowed me to stay and meet these wonderful people. We had trained with some of the best people in the, in the, in the continent and some in the world. There's a gentleman standing in between the two girls that are, that are standing up. Uh, one white gentleman that's standing in the middle there. He's an Italian, and he's an Olympic champion, Olympic champion and Olympic silver medalist. He is world champion, I think, twice, and he won the European Championships as well. When you're around people like that, there's an awe about them. You want to just absorb everything around them. I mean, TJ was just talking about people, about other people that influence him. And when he sees what's possible, how that raises your game. Being around these people, African champions, world champions, Olympic champions, it just drove me even more. We managed to qualify. Um, interestingly enough, I was the only South African that went there because no one else was willing to move to Casablanca. Nobody, nobody else was willing to, to, to leave what they had behind and go to a completely strange place and be with people you don't know and not know how you're going to pay for it. That was literally me. What happened subsequently was, was funny because I remember getting on a phone call with, with MTN and I maxed out my credit card. And, then, and I was literally like, I'm going to the Olympic Games. You guys are going to have to come and get your money from me in about a year's time. I literally said that. I mean, that's the type of the level of congruence I had inside. 
And even the gentleman was like, so you're really trying to tell me that I must call you back in a year? I'm like, yeah, because my phone is going to be off. You're not going to catch me. So, but I'll be back. <laughs> right? So, and it was interesting because that, that's how life goes. Um, are, you, are you sure of what you want? Are you willing to burn the boat? So 26, 28, 2008 goes and, uh, comes and goes. I actually, I, I decided to get married um, and we built, we start to, my wife and I, we build, uh, uh, we bought our first home. This was my first interaction with property. And the first mistake I made was buying that first property. Why? Because I realized that I'm just chucking, and, and we were one of those typical people, very typical, buy a property and live in it. And when I'm, when I'm living in it, we bought the biggest, one of the biggest properties like that I've ever been, <laughs> that I had ever sort of noticed. I mean, my family didn't own something like that. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is like, this is just a money drainer. Every month after month, I started losing more and more and more. And I just realized this is not going to work. And had to twist my wife's arm into a space of let's rather start looking at the space to rent it out to people. Now, some of the people that are in this picture are some of those people that work with us, that, that, that we rented space to. And we turn our home into then what was a, a healing center, a space that we created for others to go and get their, 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 get their psychology readings um, sessions, get like maybe some esoteric sessions. And we decided to change more into, into somewhat of a business. Cash flow in that property changed everything for us and started to open up our minds, especially mine, to what was possible. The, the thing is, as that was going on, another thing was happening. As you can see, my cheeks are a little bit puffy. <laughs> and I started to live a very, the married life, you know, the comfortable married life. This is me on a, on a and we're having fun. We're going, um, what's that? that um, we're going to go shoot those, those gun things, paintball. And what happened was someone took this photo and I looked at myself for the first time in like in what was almost four years. I realized, you know, you can spend all this time looking at yourself in the mirror, but not really truly looking. And there was something else that was not only happening to my body, it was also something that was happening inside. Now, someone, TJ earlier mentioned something about passion. And I felt that I lost mine. I was, it was all about the money. I was, you know, I, I was happy, happily married and continuing living my life. But something was just slowly draining out of me. And really, it was this passion for who I was. So what happens after that is I get a call from my coach and he needs help at a competition. It's 2020, it's 12, 2012 and uh, he gives me a call and says, listen, man, I need some help. We're going to the national championships. I know you haven't trained in a while, but we have a gap in your category and I want to know if you can come and compete. I was like, oh, I don't know. It's been a long time. You know, those type of things. Turns out, I managed to win. I won that, because now judo, you can do as an individual and you can do in a team context as well. And we, that year, we won two goals. Completely blew me away. And that's when I noticed that something inside me was lit up. And it reminded me once again of the person that I once was. I'll never forget it, Bloomington 2012. And that's what got me back onto the road. I made the national team that year, and it was really a bittersweet moment. I got to actually compete. The gentleman that's sitting haunched in front of me is Jacques Fancel. He's one of South Africa's best African champions. He won it like two or three times. Um, and we were, we were quite a, a formidable squad. But I say it was bittersweet because that was the last time I competed for South Africa. What happened was another spanner came into the works. 
the people that were running the organization didn't believe that I could qualify for the next Olympic Games and were starting to clean out the squad. And they basically told me, and it was basically on purpose, leaving me out of competition. And even though this is a fund, self-funded thing, I never understood it. And like South Africa, everything is self-funded, but they still want to tell you you can't go. It was weird. But what happened was these gentlemen, they told me I couldn't compete. So my coach gets on the phone with me again. He says, Marlon, don't you have a Mozambican passport? Now I was lucky enough to, that, my, that my father is, is from Mozambique. And I can actually use that Mozambican passport. And for the first time in forever, I used that passport and changed to my family name in Mozambique. This is me at an international competition. Everything changed. Now it's like a completely different story. I'm in a whole different environment, having to work a whole different thing. Now how often, how many times in your life do things just completely go against you? That everything that you work for completely it changes. And now you have to adapt and change the way that you're doing things. Communicate with completely different new people. Start to understand a completely different lifestyle and start to work with different people that have different mindsets. Can anyone relate? So really, how badly do you want it? What are you willing to do to get it? And are you keeping track of those things, the KPIs of that reality? So it's really, really, I mean, like, you, are you clear on what you want? And I knew I wanted the Olympic Games. So we, so we set out, it was me, and I'll show you my team, but really we, we all set out and said, okay, we're going to take everything, throw it at the wall and see what, what, what sticks. And basically what happened, what that meant, because now the rules have changed. You can no longer compete in your, it's eight years later. You can no longer compete just in Africa to qualify for the Olympic Games. You have to go on a world tour. You have to compete on the world tour in order to qualify for the Olympic Games. Get points by winning competition. And guys, I'm going to share something with you. This guy here, he's not like, I was, never, I was more like the guy with two left feet. I was not great at running. I was, I'm not the strongest. I wasn't the sharpest on the net, not the most flexible. All things you really, really need to have in judo. But my biggest aspect of who I, my biggest aspect of who I am is that I have a massive heart. I'll grind it out more than anyone. I know this. What is your talent? What are you good at? What is it that you know that you can back on yourself no matter what? They can, I always knew that. They can be stronger. They can be fitter. They can be faster. They can, they can be better than me, hands down. But one thing they will not do is outwork me and they will not outgrind me. I am there, I'm in their faces 24 seven. So what, what subsequently happened, <laughs> because now I'm a lot older, right? At this stage of my life, I'm sitting on the, on the, on the brink of um, 32 years old, so it's like right at the end of one's career. Most people actually quit in their 20s, in their late 20s. I'm deciding to go back at that time. And uh, the, the, the funny thing is that, that no matter what, I had to like reteach teach myself. As you saw, the chubby cheeks, I had stopped training completely. So I had to go back into training. Um, this is me at uh, the 2015 Oh, it was the it was the African Championships, African African Games. Um, well, I had actually was I was really upset. I'd actually I had broken my ribs uh, in in prior, like about two weeks before this competition. And what ended up happening is I have a, a massive strapping right around my chest. I didn't want to actually fight in the competition because it's not an point sport, but we do it for funding. We do it for the net for the for the country to be able to see us and for us to be able to get funding from the government, from sponsors, because this is the only time that the sport is televised, this and the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games. 
Now, I was really upset. Why? Because I just by a little bit lost the bronze medal. So I was really, really upset. Guys, I lost my way to the Olympic Games. I, I knew that all I need to do is just get to the next competition, get to the next competition, get to the next competition, and do my best at every single moment. And then I was going to see my dream. I had no idea how. Absolutely no clue how. I mean, 2008, I knew how because all I needed to do was continue winning. But in 2000, for 2016, it was a whole different ballgame. Much older, not as flexible, not really as good, but the heart was bigger than ever. So for those of you who don't know what judo is, I'd like to play you a short video. Like, so I want to, I'm going to talk it through as well, because there's an important aspect of why I even had this video in the first place. One, I needed to raise some money. So people needed to see what the sport is, what they're investing in and why. A lot of you either have properties, do business or whatever it is that you are trying to promote. How are people viewing what you do? Now, judo is a sport that you throw, you arm lock and you strangle to win. You have to throw people on their backs like that and when you do that it's game over so it's either that or you get into you immobilize them on the back or you strangle them now there's these are me doing different competitions especially um in 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 the local space but if people don't see what you do if you don't give people the opportunity to see what you are doing. How can they invest in you? How can they learn about you? You've got to share the story. Share the story with them so that they can understand and learn from you. So are you actually doing, are you doing the right things to sort of help people engage with you? These was part of my stepping stones. I had to show people, right? So I'd go out every single day. I'd go out and I'd deliver this to various, various people. Um, I would go and give it to, to different businesses, try and speak to MDs, speak to people, marketing directors, and majority of the time, I got no's. Why? Because most people, they actually prefer, especially corporate, prefer to invest in, in sports that are team sports. They don't want to. They don't want to meet with individual sports, and because judo, there was no money in it, right? And I'm not a world champion, so how are they going to invest in me? The thing is, with every single failure, I learned. I learned what they actually wanted. I learned what they. I asked them questions, and I engaged with them to learn more about what they wanted. And by the end, before the Olympic Games, I had people coming to me offering me money. But I just didn't like those deals, so we didn't take them. But one thing I realized, the more you just continue, the more you just keep going at it, that's what's going to help you separate you from everyone else. It's your ability to fail continuously and get and learn from the failures. If you're not failing, guys, if, 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 if your days are, are – if I exhaust myself most days where I'm just like, yo – I can't believe it. And that's the way for me to realize how to get better, how to be faster, how to just open up my mind more. So uh, this is like we have to do things differently. Every single time I had to start to, I had to, start to speak to the people that will make me do exercises that are different. Most people are not throwing the weights around like that. Most people are actually sitting there in the gym, you know, doing these very different training. And as you can hear, my coach is in the background telling me all the things I'm doing wrong I need to do better. So do you have that coach behind you, tinkering with you and getting you moving in the right way? Guys, flexibility is the key. You've got to be flexible. 
Because if you're not afraid, if you, if you can just step back and say like, I'm willing to be in the right environment with the right people. I mean, M5, M5 Property Addicts, M5 um, Property Varsity is an awesome place for you to go and treat it as your, as your, as your playground. A place where you can learn. Then you can get to the coaches and communicate directly with them. I've tried this. It didn't work. I tried this. It didn't work. It was very interesting because I, I, I actually counseled once with, with, with TJ just around something that was going on in my property. And just, just his perspective completely changed the way I look at how and what I should be doing and how I should be aiming. Do you have the right coaches around you? I think part of the big thing is never be afraid to take action. Because it's, it's very interesting. Like, it's so easy to say the money's not there. Something is not there. But it's like sometimes when you take those steps, those things show up. This is me at different tournaments, training around the world, and going to judo festivals. I mean, when you talk about a judo festival, you're doing judo for, for like two weeks. It means you're getting thrown on your head by different people from different parts of the world all day. It's nuts. And it's the best fun you can have with your clothes on. It's crazy. Guys, you got to do whatever it takes. So <laughs> this is me. If anybody knows anything about judo, you have to weigh in to, to compete. So you weigh in a weight category and you have to, and I competed in the category of 81 kilo that. So I need to be 81 or 70 um, or 80.90, right? Or 80.95. I couldn't be, if you're over that 81 mark, you cannot compete in that weight category. You have to move to the next category. A lot of the time, we'd be carrying a lot more weight than what our category is. So we'd have to lose that water weight. And this is the way we do it. So this is me. I've got like, like six layers <laughs> underneath all of that. As you can see, I'm, I'm like kitted up to the max. And... This and what, what I do straight after this is I go for a long ass run. Guys, the question is, are you willing to do whatever it takes? You know how weird, how strangely people look at you when it's like bloody hot outside and you are running like this in the streets. Are you okay with just being different from your family, from your friends? Are you willing to sacrifice? the thing that's needed. Interesting thing about being in this, these types of spaces is that the, the countries where, that are supporting their players, they are paying for everything. But when I just had to travel around the world, I was paying for everything myself. So what we have to do is we'd have to find very smart ways around the rules so that we could stay at, because you had to stay in an official hotel the day before you compete. But after that or before that, you could be in different spaces. So I would stay at the closest like Airbnb or booking.com base that was like the closest to it. And then move into the space where it's more expensive into these quite liney hotels. And then after that, go right back and prepare for the training camp. Every single week on week, it was like that. That was what was necessary to compete. So now this is me. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like chilling, right? I, you, think, you may think so. But a lot of the times, the weight doesn't come off so easy just from running. Sometimes you got to be in the sauna. And this story specific, particularly, you know, you may make a mistake in life. You may make one huge mistake. And I did. I decided that at the end of my December year, I was going to I was going to enjoy myself. So me, my wife, my mom, my brother and sisters, we went away. We went on a cruise. And Marlon decided to gain 9 kilos. Yes, 9 kilos in 2 weeks. The problem with that <laughs> is that I was going to compete once I got off that that boat. And I, I didn't know it was 90 kilograms. So when I get off the boat, I realize, oh my goodness, I'm way overweight and I only have three weeks 
in which to get back to my normal way. So I had to just do it with a smile. I had to be in the sauna like a crazy person every single day. The only way to actually lose all that weight is I literally had to stop eating for three weeks. I would eat just, a, just one little morsel of something just to keep me going to the next day and still train. Three weeks of just intense, and, and remember, I'm still earning money and my only money that I earn is back home. Which means that during the day and during the afternoons of training, but at night, I'm on my computer. I'm learning to code and I'm learning to build people websites and help them market online. Initially at that time, it was to market my own property and start to generate clients. That's how I got started in my game of marketing from a digital perspective. Because I had this one burning question in my mind. How do I take what I'm doing, my business, and run it without me being there, without me having to worry about, you know, did the cleaner come in? Are the, the tenants paying? Like who? Because we also had, besides like long, like tenants that were, that were long-term, um, that had long-term leases, we also had tenants that came in intermittently, like on an hourly basis, on a day basis. And while my wife was running the day-to-day, -day, I wanted to be very keyed in on every single thing that's happening. And the best way to do that is through the internet. So that's what I started to learn. I needed to market the space. I needed to be prepared for people that were going out, some new space that was vacant. So you really got to do what you need to do. You got to, at the end of the day, guys, <laughs> talking about sacrifice and it is the you know, funny thing is I'm, I'm, I'm smiling and I'm holding my pillow. Now, this is me in Japan. And uh, this was closer to the 20, 2008 Olympic Games. As you can see, I'm a lot skinnier. And uh, that pillow is a beaded, it's, a, it's a, like a bean pillow. So the Japanese, they sleep on hard mattresses. Um, and these are not hard mattresses. Basically, it's just a very thin mattress. And you got your, 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 your um, wooden cushion, and your wooden um, thing on below that. What was interesting is that that became my friend. I decided to make my pillow my friend. Because when I got on that thing, man, I was so tired. I was willing to go. <laughs> I was willing to have the best sleep on it. Guys. You know, today, we, there's so many of us that can have the excuses. I don't have. It's so hard. It's, you can, there's so many excuses that one can have. They are so much better than, yes, but you have this. But at the end of the day, what do you want? Are you willing to make those things your friends in order to help you, give you the fire to be something bigger? And I did. I made that pillow my friend, and I love my time in Japan. Though I was talking about it earlier, and really it's about your team. Who's around you? Who are those people that give you the energy, the persistence, the, 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 the wherewithal to be who you believe you can? This is my family, my wife, my mom, my, my sister, my brother, my dad. All people that just like totally believed in me. In fact, when I wanted to get back at the Olympic Games, I had to go back to all of these people and say, guys, what do you think if I had to do it again? If we had to just do it again? Funny thing is my wife, <laughs> my wife said to me, thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Then you're going to stop moping around the house. And, uh, you know, my sister and my brother were like, look, if you're going to go, and my mom too, like, if you're going to go, we're going to back you. And, uh, the other person is my coach. This guy did everything. He was the coach, he was a friend, he was the physio. He was, he was always there. Do you have those people around you? Start selecting them today. If they don't even wanna be them, you go find them. I, I chose this gentleman. We chose each other. And, I cho and he, we chose each other every single day. Because every single day I'll show up and I'll be like, woo! I'm ready to get it. I'm ready to get it. And even if I was in pain, I'd be like, woo, <laughs> you know, same sort of energy, same feel, but sometimes I couldn't just jump as high because I was in pain. 
It just is what it is. These people came with me to the Olympic Games. We were, we were all in Rio together. My entire family came and they enjoyed it with me. Unfortunately, I was at the Games. I, I, I injured myself prior. I, I had a third degree tear in my groin that caused a hernia. And it really made it com very complicated for me to compete. Nevertheless, I did. And, and I ended up losing my first match, which knocked me out of the competition. But the thing is, again, it comes down to how, what are you willing to do in order to get there? So I competed for Mozambique, and I really love this team. I love, I love Mozambique just for the fact of they gave me a chance. They were willing to let me in the door, and they made it very fair. Go ahead, and if you can qualify, we're going to take you. And that's exactly what happened. Um, on the top left here, we, on the top right, we, that's the whole entire team. The smallest, one of the smallest delegations in the Olympic Games. And we still gave it our all. Um, on, the bottom, on the bottom right, yes, all of us, you know, there's a gentleman from Macedonia. And he just loved our energy so much. He was like, I just got to come around you guys and, and, and be a part of this. And that is the question. Is like, do you have those people that just kind of want to be around you just because of your energy, just because of your vibe? Do you bring that to the work, to your, whether you are an employee, whether you are um, self-employed, especially if you're self-employed, we have to generate our own energy all the time. And it's not by focusing on the things that is like untrue, because I knew, I knew I had two left feet. I knew that, that that was like the reality. Okay, I knew I'm not that strong. I knew I was, I was um, slower than most people. I knew I was clumsier than most people. I knew all of those things. But one thing I also knew is that I don't care about any of that. I want to go to the Olympic Games. I want to win matches. I'm a champion. And I'll figure it out one way or another. So what are you telling yourself, guys? I realized the dream. I made it. I mean, like, being in this picture, I don't even think you're allowed to be on this uh, we weren't allowed to be on that thing. It was quite dangerous to be in the back there. But I didn't care. I was just so stoked about making it to this point that I had to just celebrate. And I guess that's the other question. Do you celebrate? Do you, do you celebrate your wins when you have it? You know, one of the biggest mistakes I used to make as a, as a young person, younger person in my life, was I would take for granted the wins. But as I grew older, I started to realize, you're, you know, you're not going to get many of these wins that these young kids are giving you. So you better be freaking excited and happy about every single one of them because they're worth it. Because you're worth it. So guys, I'm gonna, in closing, I'm just going to say to you, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do to be who you want to be? And, you know, are you ready to celebrate? once you get across that line. Thank you.